food. Nothing beats it. It can turn your frown upside down and make a day a pleasant one. But not everything that we put on our mouths are what they seem, with some being serious appetite killers. From meals cooled from dead fish to a snack made with the bones and skin of animals, here are 20 foods you'll never buy again after knowing how they're made. Number 20. Sturgeon Caviar I love me some seafood. Do you? We've got all sorts of them, from sardines to calamari to caviar, speaking of which, have you ever eaten caviar? Chances are that if you have, you either did or didn't like it. Well, as much as I'd like to stuff my face into some fried fish, I think I'll pass on caviar. Many of you might not know that caviar are actually the eggs of some species of fish called sturgeons. That's right, this very expensive dish is basically the unborn children of a fish. But as bad as it might already sound, it gets even worse. These eggs are gotten from the sturgeons in a way that's so ethically wrong that the entire meal should as well be removed from any menu. The process begins shortly after the fish has been captured. She is kept and made to produce eggs. After a period of time, a makeshift C-section is performed on the fish, with her body being dissected and the eggs being surgically removed. After the process is done, the fish is then sewn back up and tossed in a rehabilitation tank where she is made to recover and produce more eggs to be mercilessly extracted from her body. Talk about animal abuse. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Marshmallow So it's summer vacation at last, and the outing that you've been anticipating is finally close at hand, a camping trip. When you go camping, it's almost certainly incomplete if you don't bring along with you some bags of marshmallows. You'd sit around a campfire and tell scary stories as you poke through your marshmallow with a stick and roast it. There's no denying they taste pretty good too. That is until you know just what they put in the stuff. Originally, marshmallows were made from a special flour which was also named marshmallow. But as with most industrial made things that we put in our mouths, a whole new kind of marshmallows were made, and I've got to tell you, it sucks. Some of the new things that you can find in marshmallows include sweeteners and additives of which an accumulation of in the body might earn you more visits to the doctor's office. But if all of that wasn't a good reason for you to stop eating marshmallows, another one of the ingredients used in the manufacture of marshmallows are the ground up bone and flesh of most farm animals. These bone and flesh are used to make a substance called gelatin. It's this substance that's responsible for the springy texture of the marshmallows. Number 18. Ice Cream Vanilla Who doesn't love a nice, cold ice cream on a hot summer afternoon? I know I do, and I'm willing to bet that a majority of you do too. But here's a little fact about your friendly neighbor, vanilla ice cream, that you didn't know about. One of the things that you'd often notice about vanilla ice cream, other than the color of course, is the smell. A very distinctive smell. Some might find the smell to be quite pleasant, thus the reason you'd find a lot of perfumes and deodorants adapting the same scent. But little do most know that the scent has already been taken and by the most unlikely of creatures, the beaver. To be more specific, the part of the beaver with that scent is its butt. Yes, that's right, your vanilla ice cream is the exact same smell as the rear of a beaver. Vanilla ice cream is often made by mixing milk, cream, sugar, and in some cases, eggs. But one other major ingredient that not many ice cream companies would like the public to know that they put in their vanilla ice cream is a substance called castorium, which is gotten from places marked by beavers as their territories. In other words, beaver pee and excrement. Good luck tackling the summer heat with vanilla ice cream now. Number 17. Beer. Ah, beer every man's best friend. There might not be anything else that can rival how great a cold cup of fizzing beer is. That is until you realize that someone's been slipping dead fish skin into your glass. No, I'm not kidding. Beer isn't something new, and even though every passing moment a new person adds a bottle of beer to his or her list of best things in the world, this drink has been around for a really, really long time. I'm talking about 700 years long. 
Now, fast forwarding to modern times, there's a problem that many brewery companies had been facing with their beers. They wanted to get rid of that annoying dark coloration that often formed as they brew the beverage. The method that was chosen turns out to be one of the most revolting revelations anyone could have about their favorite beverage. A substance called icing glass has been used to clear up the liquid for many years since its discovery. A substance that's in virtually every bottle or cup of beer you can lay your hands upon. A substance that's extracted from the skin of certain fishes like sturgeon. This substance is the same thing that's often used in the production of glue and some jellies. So if you're looking for a great reason to quit the bottle, here's one. Number 16. Skittles. Skittles. Fun to share, right? Well, not so much after you learn about a gross secret about this famous candy. There's probably no store that you'd go to and you won't see a nice pack of Skittles just waiting for someone to pick it up, and usually someone always does. Not that you'd blame them. Who could deny a pack of that good colored yummy mashed up and rolled up insect parts? You didn't miss here. For all of those who've been enjoying a pack of Skittles, for those who might even be eating one right now, chances are that you're eating up mashed up bugs. Let me explain. One of the trademark thing about Skittles, other than their vibrant colors, is their sweetness. This is due to the main ingredient used to make these candies, glucose and sugar. So here's a question. What makes them so brightly colored? Certainly not the sugar. Rather, it's due to a substance called carmine which is extracted from crushed insects. This substance is especially used in making the red skittle, so if that one was your favorite, then boy oh boy. Unless you've decided on becoming an insectivore, then I'd suggest that you make peace with whatever insect guy you just ate, because skittles aren't going to be getting their coloring from any other place anytime soon. Number 15. Canned Mushrooms Mushrooms have been getting quite the bad name recently, and for good reason given how the wrong kind are used for their psychedelic effects. But fret not, that's not the kind of mushrooms that we're talking about here, obviously. These are the kind you'd use to make pizza, and just like most perishable foods, mushrooms have been made to be preserved in cans. This has become commonplace now, with many even preferring to buy canned foods over fresh ones because of their longer shelf life. But there's an unpleasantness to canned foods that I'm certain you all need to know first before you map out your next grocery shopping list. The key here is longer shelf, and so far, food companies have been getting really creative coming up with ways to achieve that, many of which you all might not like so much. But we're talking about mushrooms here, and the method that they often employ for these guys in a can might just make you lose your lunch, so brace yourselves. What is it that they use, you ask? Well, worms. Yes, crawly, gross as heck worms, that kind. The idea is to put the right amount of worms in the can, say 20 of these tiny crawlers per 100 grams of mushrooms, and just let them feast on whatever decaying agent might want to spring up in the can and ruin the good mushrooms. Number 14. Pringles. At this point, you'd probably start thinking something along the line of, is it bad for me, before eating anything, and that would probably be a good idea. Because nowadays the things that are most accepted as great foods or snacks are really just poisons hiding behind all that lovely spiciness and mouthwatering crunchiness. Take Pringles for instance. I'm willing to wager that more than half of you watching this video have had at least a can of them, and they're pretty good too, so I wouldn't blame you if you'd said they were one of your favorite snacks. But let's ask the right question first. Is it bad for you? And the short answer is, yes, it's bad for you. But what is exactly wrong with Pringles? That's not exactly the right question to ask. Rather, what isn't wrong with it? Sure, it tastes good and all, but taste means nothing when what you're eating is slowly killing you. These guys are packed with all sorts of artificial flavoring, so no, the spice isn't real. A large amount of what makes up each individual chip is sodium, an electrolyte which too much of could upset the osmotic balance of your body, and in worst cases, even kill the person if not cause them great harm. All these, coupled with all manner of synthetic additives, makes this snack a big no-no. Number 13. Artificial Sweeteners I'm sure that you all must have heard of Zero Cola. Apparently, it's a kind of Coca-Cola that's supposed to have absolutely no sugar in it. Or at least that was the whole marketing story behind this product. But was it true? Well, here's a bit of a crash course for all of you. The source of any sweetness in anything at all is always due to molecules of sugar that's present in it. So what happens then when the sugar is removed from SE of these products like diet soda? So what happens when the sugar is removed from these products like diet soda and replaced with artificial sweeteners? Well, let's dive right into that. 
So far, the five approved sweeteners include saccharin, isosulfame, aspartame, neotame, and sucralose. Though it's accepted that artificial sweeteners could sweeten most foods and drinks while not filling you with as much calories as conventional sugar, thus helping you maintain your weight. But don't go rushing for a can of Zero Cola just yet. There are still things that are so wrong with them that they'd make you go right back to sugar. For starters, sweeteners are more potent than sugars. This could increase the risk of addiction to sweetened foods, something that still would lead to weight gain. There's also the risk of numbness to not-so-sweet foods arising, something that could lead to more intake of less healthy foods like choosing Doritos over an apple. Number 12. Sawdust Parmesan Cheese has been around for a really long time, and for some, life just wouldn't be complete without it. Some of you might be wondering, what could possibly be wrong with harmless old cheese? Well, nothing at first. That is until some cheese manufacturing companies decided that it was a great idea to add wood to the ingredients while making them. Okay, don't go losing your wits just yet. I can assure you that there actually isn't wood in your cheese. That was just the exaggeration that was attached to this case back when it was a thing. But there is cellulose in them. If you'd taken any botany classes, you'd know that cellulose are the substances that are responsible for the rigidity of the plant's cell wall. It's basically a more complex and slightly weirder version of starch, a compound that you can find in animals. So what's wrong with the fact that there's cellulose in our cheese, and why would they put it there? Firstly, unlike starch, our bodies aren't capable of digesting cellulose, so these guys travel throughout our alimentary canal without a care in the world. This isn't really a bad thing, however, as it serves the function of roughage, a kind of food which aids bowel movement and prevents constipation. As for why there's cellulose in your cheese, well, that's because it serves the function of an anti-clumping agent. Number 11. Chewing Gum just step out for a bit, and chances are that you'd spot at least one person working his or her jaw chewing some gum. Heck, I bet some of you might be chewing some right now. For most of you, hearing that gum isn't good for you probably wouldn't come as a surprise at all. After all, it wasn't like you were swallowing them. All the time. But have you ever wondered what exactly was wrong with this yummy treat? Chances are that you have, and I'm here to give you the details on this. What is easily the trademark thing about chewing gum is its elastic, rubbery texture. It's what makes chewing gum what it is. So, this is all pretty basic stuff, something that any average Joe who's never tossed gum into his or her mouth would know. But have you ever tried to know exactly what is in gum and makes it so rubbery and gummy? It turns out the main ingredient that gives gum this property is something called lanolin. This is primarily gotten from sheep. It's a waxy-like substance that they secrete from their skin to help moisturize their wool and keep it waxy. The best comparison to this is the sebum that we humans secrete from our skin that makes it look and feel oily and waxy. While lanolin might not be so harmful, swallowing it in gum could lead to lanolin oil poisoning. Number 10. Blue Cheese I'm sure you must have heard, but there are a lot of different kinds of cheese out there. From goat cheese, to cream cheese, to Swiss cheese, and of course, blue cheese. Now I know that most have probably got good reasons to not be overly concerned about the kinds of things that cheese are made out of. That is, until they find out that cheese is basically rotten milk. Okay, sorry to start all you guys there. Let me make one thing clear first. Even though it's true that cheese is basically fermented milk, all of the microbes that were responsible for the fermentation of the milk will be extracted before the cheese is shipped out for consumption. And that brings us to the real elephant in the room, which is the kind of microbes employed in the production cheese process. The blue cheese is a product of the fermentation of milk by a specialized microbe called penicillium. Normally, these microorganisms are notorious for the release of toxins which could cause adverse effects to the human body. Fortunately, the penicillium that's used in the production of blue cheese doesn't produce such toxins, so they're relatively safe, but for some, that won't hide just how gross it is. The peculiar smell, taste, and coloration of the cheese is all as a result of the penicillium used in making it. Number 9. Red Bull You know what they say, Red Bull gives you wings. Hopefully it won't give you wings straight to the afterlife. But okay, that might be a bit of an exaggeration but it's still no joke just how much sugar and caffeine that this beverage has. And in the most extreme cases, it could lead to complications that could easily ruin someone's day. Let's start with the unhealthy excess amount of sugar in it. For each 260 liter of Red Bull, you'd be getting an approximately 29 grams of sugar. That's pretty much for anybody. 
With a sugar level like that, frequent consumption of this beverage could lead to type 2 diabetes, something that I'm certain no one wants to have to battle with. Take it from me, it's not a pleasant experience. Not nearly as pleasant as the way you'd feel for the first few minutes of drinking a can of Red Bull. Which brings us to the insane amount of caffeine that's in this drink, making you feel like you could literally fly. For each 250 milliliters of Red Bull, which is basically a can, downing about 80 grams of caffeine. Needless to say, while you might feel like Superman after drinking it, but drink just enough and your day could literally come crashing down. Number 8. Microwave Popcorn It's Friday night and you're planning on finally watching that movie you and your friends have been talking about all week. Chances are that your snack of choice is going to be a steaming, freshly buttered and sugared bucket of popcorn. In our day and age, popcorn with a good movie is practically an unspoken tradition, one that even I participate in. So, popcorns themselves aren't the problem here. In fact, popcorns might be one of the healthiest snacks out there. Popcorns are rich in fiber, something that helps in proper bowel movement during food digestion, and they're also packed with a super substance known as polyphenols. These are antioxidants that are gotten exclusively from plants and are associated with cell health. So yeah, popcorns are great. The real problem lies with the method that's often employed in preparing this wonder snack. The packaged kernel which is often prepared in popcorns by microwaving are laced with diacetyl, a substance which serves as a flavoring agent. This substance is notorious for causing a lung disease called bronchiolitis, which has also been given the very fitting name popcorn lung. So the next time you're about to grab a snack for movie night, it might be a good idea to steer clear of microwaved popcorns. Number 7. Hot Dog Who doesn't like a good hot dog for lunch? I know I do. But just because you like something doesn't make it good for eating. As a matter of fact, if life has shown us anything, it's that it's often quite the opposite. Still, there's no denying the relevance of hot dogs, especially in countries like the United States where they even have their own legal and official council. They call themselves the Hot Dog and Sausage Council. So, what's so wrong with hot dogs? Well, here are a few. According to research conducted by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, or IARC for short, hot dogs have been linked to various kinds of cancers, such as breast, bladder, and stomach cancer. Another problem that hot dogs are responsible for is the degeneration of a healthy heart. This is because of the large amount of sodium and fat that are present in the hot dogs. And just when you thought that one meal couldn't get any worse, it's been discovered that too much consumption of hot dogs could drastically increase one's chances of getting type 2 diabetes. Depending on how much hot dogs that one eats, the risk of diabetes could go from 20% to 30%. So hot dogs, that's a big no. Number 6. Chicken Nugget there aren't many things out there that can thrill one's taste buds like chicken nuggets. You know what kind of meal is super good when it's constantly being sold in the bucket loads day in and day out, literally. But while this food might be one of your favorites, and some of you might even think that there couldn't possibly be anything wrong with it, the truth is often hidden just beneath the surface, also literally. So how are chicken nuggets made? Well, they're made from chicken, period. But of course, if that was all that there was to it, then it would never been made this list, now would it? The exterior of the chicken nugget comprises mostly of the white chicken meat which is gotten from the breast part of the chicken's body. This is fine, but things soon take a turn for the uh once we take a look at what's really put inside the chicken nuggets. Most manufacturers would ground up other parts of the chicken such as the tendons, muscles, nerves, and even fat and roll them up into the right size before stuffing them into the chicken breast, thus making the chicken nugget. Research conducted has shown that some chicken nuggets even contain a higher percentage of fat than the chicken meat. I don't need to say too much. Chicken nuggets are a yummy bad news. Number 5. Worcestershire Sauce It's used in all manner of meals and drinks, like giving your meat stews that extra oomph that it needs to become a delicacy. It's also a wonder ingredient in foods like casseroles, pies, soups, and sauces. For those of you who aren't a big fan of anything that tastes like fish, I don't think that this condiment is not for you. Some of the other kinds of things that you should expect to find in Worcestershire sauce are molasses, onions, and a lot of seasoning. To most, a meal can never be truly complete without a few dashes here and there of Worcestershire sauce.
but you'd better brace yourselves because I'm about to tell you what exactly it is you've been putting all of your pancakes. Let's start by telling you very briefly how this wonder condiment came to be. So Lee and Perrins were at it again with their experiments with fish, seasoning, and sugar syrup. They didn't like the end product and so they tossed it in a cupboard somewhere and forgot about it. A year and a half passed and they ended up unearthing their failed creation, and for some reason decided to give it a taste before deciding whether or not to throw it away. It tasted great, and now here we are spraying decayed fish on our cheese. Number 4. Orange Juice now I'm sure that this must come as a surprise to most of you guys. I mean it's orange juice. What could possibly be so wrong about orange juice? Well, I'll start answering that question, but first ask yourselves this. Oranges aren't in season all year round. They're only ever made available for feasting for late autumn to late spring depending on the variety. So how then are orange juices always available irrespective of the season? I bet not all of you thought about that, did you? Now let's talk a bit more about the counterfeit that's always enthusiastically marketed to us in cartons and bottles. The things we often chug down thinking that their orange juice are actually chemically fabricated fluids which are composed of compounds that you normally wouldn't even find in an orange, like the chemical ethyl butyrate, which is added to the mix to give it that deceptive, sweet, fresh scent of a newly squeezed orange. Of course, no one needs to tell you that drinking enough of this could cause some unpleasant complications, especially when you consider things like the effect of the excessive sugars and sweeteners added to the juice, not to mention the preservatives. Needless to say, I think I'll be sticking to water for a while. Thank you. Number 3. Packaged Bread For some, this one's probably going to sting a bit. Most of us really love bread, and there's practically nothing more convenient than the sliced ones. But if you've ever tried baking your own bread, then you would have probably started noticing something fishy about the sliced and packaged bread that we all know and love. And no, it's not because there's sardines in it. The homemade bread that you made, probably with your grandma, wouldn't last more than a single day before it starts getting infested with molds. This is normal. So why on earth is the bread that you got from the grocery store still looking perfectly fine even though it's been there for a week? That's the red flag right there. Once again folks, do brace yourselves because things are about to get gross. This bread lasts longer than normal because of a substance that's added to it called L-cysteine. This substance is gotten from human hair, with the clipped off ones in salons being a staple. I kid you not, in fact, the hair from the average Chinese is often the most used to extract this compound. So from now on, try to look out for hair in your bread, at least now you'd know why. Number 2. Packaged Meat Meat is simply not meant to last outside of the freezer, so you can imagine my worry when I open up a can of meat with it still seemingly being in perfect condition. So now we've got to ask, how is it that we are able to pull off something as hard as keeping meat fresh without just putting it in a freezer? Well, the answer to that might surprise you. It turns out that a method that's used to keep packaged meat from spoiling is by treating it with carbon monoxide. You know, the same poisonous stuff that if you inhaled too much of it would definitely kill you. Okay, don't go rushing to your icebox to throw your meat away just yet. The amount of carbon monoxide used this way is too small to pose any real threat to your health. But there is still a danger in hiding that you all need to look out for. You see, when meat is exposed to the oxygen-rich air for long enough, it quickly loses its red color and turns gray like turkey. This won't do. The carbon monoxide is added to the meat so it retains that vibrant red color. The problem with this is that even if the meat spoils, the rich redness of it wouldn't sell its inedibility. You wouldn't know that you just picked up some bad meat. Number 1. Jelly Beans and that brings us to the last entry on this list. I hope you've been able to keep your breakfast in so far, and if you haven't, sorry about that. If so, then do smash that like button. And if this is the kind of content that you like to see, then hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell, so that you can always know whenever I upload a new video. Now let's get back to it. Who doesn't like those yummy, colorful balls of fun? If there's one thing that you'd notice about jelly beans other than their vibrant colors, it's the way they look so shiny on the outside. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it reminded so much of polished wood. What a coincidence, considering that it's exactly the material used to make wood shiny and add all that nice finishing touch to them. This substance is called shellac, and it's been used like this for many years long before jelly beans became a thing. So I guess the candy that we practically grew up loving is also part bug poop. Yes, that's right, this shellac is something that's excreted by the female lac bug. You feel like puking yet? That's it with this list of foods that you wouldn't want to eat once you know how they're made. Which one did you guys find to be the most intriguing? Which was the biggest shocker to you? Also, check out some of our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. Until next time.